Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the Ruger Security 9. And this is a, an interesting pistol. Very interesting pistol. I had high hopes for this, but I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. I'm a little let down by it. Not to say that this is necessarily going to be a negative review, but I do have a longer list of things that I don't like about this pistol than I do liking this pistol. However, I do want to make sure that you understand that even though the, this pistol has a number of things that I don't necessarily care for, doesn't necessarily mean I'm not going to recommend it to people. I have talked to several people who are interested in purchasing their first firearm here of late and talk to them about this pistol. I gave it as an option for them because this is a budget pistol. It's coming in right around that 325 to 375 mark depending on when and where you buy it. Keep in mind, whenever you're watching this video, prices can vary depending on where you are. The market may vary as well, but I personally paid 349 for this and you know for that price you're getting exactly what you should expect now it does have some things that kind of go over and above what you should expect for about a 350 and fifty dollar pistol but uh realistically there are some deficiencies that i would t need to talk about when it comes to this pistol and go from there needless to say this is going to be uh i would say probably at least top five of the budget pistols that are out on the market today in my opinion and when i say budget pistols i'm talking you know i would say realistically 425 and below um it also could be in the conversation for the best pistol below $500 too, but uh, we're not going to get into that nuance right here, right now. Needless to say, this is going to be Ruger's entry into the polymer frame semi-automatic 9mm pistol. Now, this is going to be a hammer-fired pistol, whereas most of these types of pistols are going to be striker-fired. So there's some uh, pros and cons on both sides of the aisle when it comes to hammered versus striker-fired pistols, but uh, we'll touch on that here in just a little bit, especially with this one. But let's talk about some of the things that I like about this pistol. First and foremost, the price. The price is something that you're going to have to talk about when it comes to a pistol like this. Now, this is going to be a compact pistol, so it's going to be very similar to that of a Glock 19. Regardless if you like Glocks or not, you have to understand that that is going to be the baseline for a lot of people because they are so prolific. Realistically though, uh, 15 round capacity on these metal magazines. It does come with two, and this is probably one of the first things that I'd like to talk about when it comes to this pistol. Having steel magazines in a polymer frame pistol makes for very easy fall away when it comes to reloading these pistols. If you've ran Glocks uh, in the past or you've had the ability to shoot a Glock and do some reloading at the range, you'll know that sometimes the magazine will kind of hang up halfway out and you have to grab it and toss it before you reload. That is a deficiency with Glocks. I do recognize that, uh, but having these steel mags really helps mitigate that for the most part, at least from what I've found. I've only been able to put about two to 300 rounds through this so far, obviously, because ammunition availability and price is a bit of an issue, but I will say that this has done pretty decent for that. I've had a few hiccups um, with reliability on this, but nothing that is major at all. Uh, just some failure to feeds, and I do understand that's probably due to kind of the break-in period of this pistol. Some of the other things that I really like about this is the grip texture on the pistol grip here is very comfortable. I would like to see it a little bit more aggressive, but at the very least, it feels good in the hand. Very similar to that of a Taurus G3C or a G2C, um, but I would say probably not as aggressive as far as the texture goes. It is going to have front slide serrations, so if you guys like to do press checks, you can do that. A nice rail on the 
frame here for all of your whiz bang gadgets, whether that be lasers or lights or whatever the case may be. And then one of the other features that a lot of people don't even think about or kind of overlook is going to be the trigger guard. This is a very large trigger guard. I do like that because that's going to allow you to be able to shoot this while wearing gloves. And I do like the fact that they took time and consideration to put that into the design of this pistol. It is going to have a manual safety on here, so if that is something that you guys are interested in, that is there for you to use. Uh, with this having a trigger safety, I'm not one to really mess with the manual safety, but uh, for anyone who is new or inexperienced with carrying or using pistols, that is a really good safety features. Okay, so got it out to the range, ran a few hundred rounds through it, and uh, like I said, ran into some minor hiccups, not that big of a deal, but what can I say when it comes to uh, shooting this pistol, and what are some of the things that I'm uh, a little let down by? While this pistol seems to have a lot of promise for a lot of people out of there, there's some nitpicky things from my perspective that I wanted to talk to you guys about that may have you guys reconsider or at least think through this a little bit more than you possibly would if you were just going to go and impulse buy this type of pistol. With that being said, uh, first and foremost is the sights. Now these are adjustable, driftable metal sights. So good on Ruger for doing that. However, the very first thing is this ball and basket design that is basically copied from the Glock pistols. Everybody chains out the sights from Glocks as soon as they get them, or most people do anyway. And I don't understand why Ruger would, would go with this type of setup. First and foremost, um, Everybody hates them that owns a Glock. I can tell you that, <laughs> at least for the people that I talk to. Number two is uh, I have a very difficult time shooting this type of setup when it comes to these sights. I don't like the ball and basket. It really messes with my head while I'm trying to get my sight picture and sight alignment before I squeeze off around. Uh, there's just way too much going on on this rear sight for my eyes to concentrate in on that front sight post and then line everything up. It just messes with my head and I think that that has uh, a lot to do with my um, letdown when it comes to the accuracy. At seven yards I was able to put uh, rounds on target uh, a little bit bigger than a fist, uh, which is good, but I was struggling trying to slow fire and get rounds right on top of each other. I would always have several that would stray, and I believe that has to do with the sight setup. That's number one. Number two is how they designed the sights on the slide itself. Oh, man, I just don't understand it. I do understand that some manufacturers are trying to distance themselves or at least make them a little bit more recognizable than that of other pistols, namely Glocks. But as you can see here, there is a dramatic angle to the back of the slide, which then pushes the rear sight forward, reducing that sight radius. Not only are you losing about half an inch on this, a portion of the slide that they've cut off, then you add another half inch to where this uh, dovetails into the slide. And you're, you're missing out on nearly an inch of sight radius that could have been increased on this. This is a very large designed sight uh, that has really no adequate function for this pistol. And what do I mean by that? Well, the front of this rear sight is angled. So if you wanna do any type of one-handed manipulation, it's gonna be extremely difficult to do that with the rear sight. You're more likely gonna to have to use the front of the slide on the heel of your shoe or something like that. And I understand that a lot of people are like, oh, that's all the tactic cool stuff. You don't need to do that and everything. But um, I've trained with one-handed manipulations. I think that everybody should at least try it to understand and know how to do it. And then you'll see why I bring that up time and time again. 
um, especially if I'm out with my daughter and I need to, you know, move her around with one hand. Obviously, if I'm trying to protect her with one hand, if I have for some reason a failure to feed, failure to fire, stovepipe, whatever the case may be, and I need to tap rack, I can do that with one hand. I know how to do that. Having a sloped site like this, not going to allow me to do that. So that is a design flaw that I think that they need to fix desperately. The next thing that I will say is that I don't understand this channel right here for the hammer. Now, like I said, this is a hammer fired pistol, not a uh, striker fired pistol. And I think the reason why they cut this channel in the rear of the slide is so that you could see if the hammer is cocked. And I kind of understand that, but the other side of me is if you're following the first rule of firearm safety, you treat every gun as if it's loaded. Regardless of what's going on, you should always treat it as it's loaded, regardless if it has these witness holes here on the barrel to see if there's brass in there and you know it's loaded, or, you know, it's got a magazine, whatever the case may be, you should treat it as if it's loaded. So there's really no purpose in having this, right? Uh, you should always clear your firearm before you do anything uh, that you don't intend to shoot a target with, right? So there's that aspect of it. In addition to it, with having this big freaking uh, cut in the rear of the slide, it's going to be a channel for all types of stuff to get in there. And for people who want to carry this on a daily basis, this is going to essentially be a trough for lint, hair, dust, dirt, mud, gunk, whatever the case may be. That is going to capture all of that right there for you guys. So I don't, again, understand why they would do that. Uh, the controls on this is something else that I'm not too happy with either. The magazine release is in a place where it's pretty decent. I have small hands, but for the most part, I don't have to really um, break my grip to actuate it just ever so slightly, but not anything that would be um, detrimental to me shooting this in a defensive situation. So that's pretty decent. I will say that on a full magazine, the slide catch, slide relief, slide stop, whatever you want to call it right here is pretty decent to use. But if it is on a empty mag and I, I do get it, not necessarily supposed to drop your slide on an empty mag, whatever, I do it anyway. Um, it's, I can't, I can't do it. I have to slingshot this back and ease it forward. The manual safety is almost impossible to place on safe with the knuckle, the inside knuckle of my thumb. I can do that with my M17. I can do it with my, my 1911s. Uh, but for this, I can't do it. I have to break my grip and push up with the tip of my thumb. That's something I don't particularly care for. So uh, I can slide it off, uh, not, a, not a problem, but trying to place it on safe, I can't do it. I have to break my grip and I don't like breaking my grip whenever I don't have to. So <clears throat> there is that aspect of it. One of the other things that I will say about this is um, this has a pretty decent uh, trigger pull, even though it's a hammer fired pistol, it is going to have a little give in that trigger as you are actuating it. Uh, there's a bit of a wall, it's a good solid wall, and then it's going to be real spongy, and then it's finally going to break over. The reset on this is going to be fairly decent. It's going to pretty much go the full length of that trigger pull. Uh, the reset is audible, but not very tactile. So there's that aspect of it as well. So the question is, would I recommend this pistol? And I would say, depending on what the individual is looking for, this would be in the discussion. I typically like to give several different options to people depending on what they are looking for. Is it going to be concealed carry? Is it going to be a nightstand? Is it going to be something that they carry with them um, 
in a, you know, outside the waistband holster and kind of a duty type of use. You know, those are some of the questions that I'm going to be asking. And then obviously, how much money do you have to spend as well? So I would say that this is going to be in the discussion on people, uh, to people when, you know, recommending a pistol. But whether or not this would be number one, I don't know. I don't think it would be. It has ran decent. The accuracy is decent. I think it's probably more accurate than what I can shoot. But at the end of the day, there are some, some gaps with this pistol that Ruger, I think, really should look into. So if they were to do a Security 9 Mod 2, uh, they could really look into correcting some of these things. The first thing that I would say is change these sights. Um, change them to where they're compatible with Glock sights, number one, but get rid of this ball and basket design. It's horrible. Fix the slide so you can extend the sight radius. Those would be the biggest recommendations that I have on this pistol. And then the last thing is I'd say get rid of the manual safety. It's really not necessary. And then cover up your uh, slide cut on the, um, on the hammer channel. Those are some of my recommendations, but I'll give it to you guys. What do you guys think? Would this be a viable option for a budget pistol? whether it be for you or for someone else out there. I do know that they have a smaller version of this and we'll take a look at that one in the future, but I wanted to get this one underneath um, the belt or at least the content pulled together for you guys before I started looking at the subcompact version of this um, moving forward. So sound off in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Am I completely off base on this? Am I missing some things? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So that pretty much covers it for the Ruger Security 9. Again, I will continue to put some rounds through this and give you guys an update video on down the road. But realistically, this has been, uh, as much as I like Ruger, they put out some really good products. This has been kind of a little bit of a letdown. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to dissuade anyone from purchasing one of these if they think that this is going to fit their needs uh, best, uh, better than any other pistol out there. So at the end of the day, really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. Patreon crew, thank you so much for your time and effort. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, there are tons of links down in the description below for you guys to do that. We'll go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much as always. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.